There are only a handful of sentences that can guarantee your life is about to change. For me, this was part of a journey that started in 2014 with a random webcomic on a random website. It was like stumbling upon a hidden treasure, lying dormant, waiting to be discovered. And what a treasure it was. No encore? What happened to you that made you hate fun? How oh, is it playtime now? Time to tie up some loose ends. It is 1927 and prohibition is in full effect. The city of St. Louis is dry on the surface, but there's a wellspring of illicit beverages underground. Created by Tracy Butler, Lacadaisy follows the fortunes of the last members of the Lacadaisy speakeasy. They are half gangsters, half bootleggers, and 100% cats. In the summer of 2014, a young me, well, I was actually 20 years old, right? <laughs> but I discovered this webcomic and I was immediately hooked. Its world was so well researched and the characters, they were alive. At that time, I was going through a 3D animation program at a local university, but I decided I wanted to learn how to draw, to switch to 2D animation, and Lackadaisy was the first time I could actually appreciate the draftsmanship behind a drawing. They were not just cartoons, I was very painfully aware that someone somewhere sat down to draw these gorgeous panels, and I was terrified, but extremely motivated. When people talk about Lacadaisy, they usually talk about the sepia tones from the early pages, but I can't put in words what the comic evolves into. It's something I wish you can experience for yourselves, and you can, for free, in Lacadaisy.com. But a funny thing kept happening to me. When I read a new page and thought about it the next day, the memory was an animation in my mind. And I thought, wouldn't it be the coolest thing to see this all animated? That would have to wait until 2020, when Tracy launched a Kickstarter alongside Iron Circus Comics for what initially was an art book plus an animated short for $85,000. And you know how people say it's impossible to time the market? Well, Lackadaisy did just that and launched its Kickstarter on the very day the market plummeted to a rock bottom. But the Lackadaisy fandom stood strong. You guys hit your Kickstarter goal on the first day. How many hours no, was it? Six, six hours. Six hours. Six hours, Jesus. It has worked out so far. Mm. Um, it goes to show how badly like, people want their animated cat people. The Kickstarter went up to gather $330,000, which skyrocketed the project to a fully-fledged animated pilot. Of course, I backed it myself and wished it good luck. And this is where we need to introduce another character to the story, the director for this project, and who actually managed to bring the idea of a lackadaisy animation to its full potential. Fable Seagull is a force of nature. They are hands down the most talented artists I've ever had the pleasure of working with. When you're talking to them, it just energizes you and makes you want to give your very best at what you're doing. Also, you can tell you're in a voice call with Fable, cause suddenly everything has chicken noises in the background. Flash forward to a few months later and I saw a post by Fable and it was an open call for animators. For Lackadaisy? A lot of people, it may be a foot in the door or a stepping stone onto, on the way to their career. You know, we're, we're reaching out to people who have experience, but also people who are maybe who haven't had a studio job before and, and who just have a nice looking portfolio and reel and stuff. That was me. The only thing that I had was my graduation film, which I had finished literally weeks before the hiring call. But it was lackadaisy and I wouldn't miss it for the world, so I put my best scenes into a reel and applied as a cleanup artist. And on June 7th of 2020, I got the email. You have gotten the job. And as an animator nonetheless. I don't have words to describe how excited and happy I felt. But then the panic set in. Oh my god. I got the job. It is not an exaggeration when I say that Lackadaisy changed my life's course. And by the end of the video, you will understand why. But here's what this video is not going to be. I won't tell you how working in Lackadaisy opened the doors of the industry for me, even though it did, because I know you don't care about this. No, I want to open a window to what working in Lackadaisy was like. Obviously, this is my subjective opinion, but I'm doing this in the hopes that more animation productions can take note and utilize these same elements. I truly believe there's value for every animation production and every animation fan. But first, we need to talk about crowdfunding. 
Ever since animation started appealing to the masses, someone whose only goal is to maximize profit, they have different names in every industry. Hollywood executives, production committees, they get to decide what we as an audience get to watch. When the machine is working correctly, they give a chance to original ideas that try to be different. Some of them thrive, while others not so much. But as profit goals keep growing, the industry becomes more risk adverse. And we as an audience have absolutely no say on this. We did put a pitch together and we got told to, to make our own animation because <laughs> that would be the best way to get noticed. But even it, it if- It was said with a lot of love, by the it, way. Like, oh, okay, like, oh, well. just go and do your own. <laughs> yeah, people, okay. people like the artwork and everything, but um, it, it's just, you know, they, they're like, unless there's like certain names attached to it, it's, it's really hard for us to like Yay. take a chance on something that if doesn't you... already fit a certain formula. Yeah, if you're not children's entertainment or young adults, like, and if you're not a New York Times bestseller list thing or, you know, if you're not that prominent or you don't know the right people, you aren't a celebrity's child or something, then you really have no inroads unless you go out on the internet and go and, and make a bunch of noise and then get that attention. It is thanks to brave individuals like Tracy, Fable, Iron Spike and the entire production team who decided to take on a lot of risk, not only financially, but literally giving entire years of their lives so that projects like this get to exist. And let me make this very clear, big production companies and studios are not the enemy. I am convinced that if a project like Lackadaisy wants to continue on this road, they do need to get picked up by a production house, similar to what Has Been Hotel did. There is benefits on the production and investment power that these giants have. But the industry has become severely risk adverse and we need to force them to listen. This video will go out at the same time the pilot goes live, so I do not know yet how it's gonna go. But I do know because I watched the pilot one week before and as you probably know right now, studios should really pay attention to the indie animation scene and the power of crowdfunding. Here's what's magical, everything you're seeing exists because of you the audience, a big group of people each giving a small amount of money to create tremendous impact in the world. Now we truly have the opportunity to help these new ideas flourish. And we need to keep pushing. If by some reason you're watching this video and you haven't watched the animated pilot, please go watch it, the link is in the description. This is your chance to tell the studios we are tired of them preying on nostalgia and being afraid of new ideas on the screen. But especially, we are freaking tired of animation being treated as children's content. Both with your view, but please keep watching this video, watch it after this one. <laughs> now let's get into what working in Lackadaisy was really like and what was so unique about it. There is no escaping it, the pandemic. Which meant everything had to be done online from the very beginning. And they managed to do this by creating a Discord server. And while this is not the first online production to do this, it is the only time I've seen a structure like this. You could see everyone's work. And I truly mean everyone's work. I could see what the background artists were painting, when the storyboard team was working on changes. And here's where I get to make you a little jealous. We even got to sit in on the voice acting recording sessions, if we promised to be quiet. Ah, I cannot put in words what a learning experience this was. We all had to sign an NDA, which meant nobody was about to leak anything to the public. Hence while I'm blurring this part of the video, but even on that regard, we were allowed to stream and post progress on our social media. That's right, as long as you asked for permission and it wasn't a crucial scene for the plot, you could post your animations. Personally, I only posted a test I animated when we were starting, but the entire crew was so supportive that even Tracy, Fable and Michael Kovac himself, the voice actor for Rocky, were sharing it with their fans. This is actually so smart, and I think most productions should do this as they will benefit from this. I know in some cases like Marvel Studios, they would never be able to do this because obviously they have to be secretive about it. But for indie animation productions, you are both helping the production get more traction and helping the artists grow on social media as well. You never know what a small push can allow your team members to do. Going back to the perks of having total access to the work of your animation peers is the environment it created. In online productions, you would interact with production assistants, your animation supervisor, and that's that. But in a Discord server, you get to see not only what they are doing, but their process and the notes they get. And a funny thing started to happen. 
it makes you competitive in a good way. Because after seeing so many beautiful animations by everyone else and the fact that we all love the original source material, you just have to make your shot the very best. And that's why this pilot looks and moves and sounds how it does. We got to challenge each other as artists, but also learn from each other, which takes me to my next point. Everyone noticed that there was so much value going on in these channels that the team came up with an idea, doing a process swap, which is getting together for a couple of hours once per week and just sharing your process with the entire crew. Guys, these sessions blew my mind. Before this, animation was like this bunch of different pieces floating all around. And it was the very first time that I saw everything was like cohesive building blocks that you can use to bring characters to life. I'm, I'm not gonna geek out too much about like what animation is, but these sessions made me go back and start doing studies again and realize that there were just things in animation that are possible that I didn't even know were possible. It was also an ambient that invited to be creative with your shot. Here's a funny story. With one of my shots, I decided to add an extra gag for Freckle at the end, where he just basically, <laughs> he was just pooped carrying the coffin. And when I posted it for review, Fable was actually streaming at that time. And this is their reaction. <laughs> this thing that got added into the animation. Freckle just collapsed at the end. This is great. Oh my God. Okay, this is great. I'm gonna say that this is approved now. As someone who works a lot in outsourcing, deviating from the storyboard would have been a retake. But here we got to make our shots our own and make them shine. We were also defining how some things would look as we went. I helped figure out how Sip's cigarette smoke would look and the crew got on board with that. And in all honesty, it was all luck! I've never in my life animated smoke before, but that's the fun of it. Every new scene that an animator posted for review felt refreshing for the entire team. We also had a lot of fun events. We played games, we played garbage phone, we had guest talks. But over the course of a long production, there's gonna be a lot of feelings coming through. There was a point where I was feeling a bit overwhelmed, since I felt I wasn't good enough to be part of the team. And Fable told me one of the most important messages I think I've ever gotten from a director. You got the job. That same phrase that started this journey for me. What they meant is, if you got the job, it wasn't by chance. Trust yourself that you can do the thing and just go do it. Imposter syndrome crawls upon you quite often in an art career. So this phrase has been an incredible reminder for me to both stay humble, but remember that if I got the job, it means I can do the thing. And do the thing we all did. After exactly three years and five days from the date the Kickstarter launched, it was finished. I can only imagine how taxing this must have been for Tracy and Fable. They were literally on at all times. I don't want this to sound like this was a two-person project. I know they would both want me to also say this. The crew was over 170 people strong and every single one of them had a crucial role in making what the Lackadaisy pilot is today. There's a link in the description to all the crew's names and links to their profiles. Every single one of them is incredibly talented. What I'm trying to highlight here is it really takes a metric ton of determination to see a gargantuan task like this one all the way through. We even had an emote named Go to Bed Fable because they never did. This part of the story is being written as you watch this, and it's up to you what happens now. I want to make this video as a love letter to not only Lackadaisy, but crowdfunded animation projects. You as the audience have the power to breathe life into so many projects and stories that are worth telling. And it doesn't take much, whatever you can give to support them, and if you really can't afford it, then just your time watching and enjoying these productions is already more than enough. Lackadaisy showed me there's a world where if you have a story worth telling, you don't need to wait for someone else's approval. And that has been my goal ever since. That is the reason why I started this YouTube channel. I wanted to give creators the tools to tell their own stories to the world and hopefully inspire them by also telling mine. I know I'm not alone on this. I want to also shout out other projects that you should definitely check out. Seti C's Ramshackle and Ashley Nichols Farfetch. 
They were both members of the LACA crew, but they've both started on a journey for projects of their own that we get to support. So there's links in the description. To the entire crew, thank you for taking me under your wing and for all the friends I made along the way. Words can't begin to describe how proud I am of what we did and how honored I feel to have been part of this production. This pilot stands its own ground in the history of 2D animation and I'm sure a lot of young animators will look back at it as yeah, I got into animation because of the lack at AC pilot. Thank you all for inspiring others to pursue what we love and congratulations. Avicenia! I'll look at that again because I just enjoyed it so much. <laughs> but yeah, when you play it and like it makes you smile, something's working. Just the way he collapses on it. Oh, those shoes are really satisfying. <laughs>